Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our online workshop, Social Media 101. Firstly, thank you for joining us today. My name is Courtney Sandor, and I'm the events coordinator here at Realize Business. Realize Business is a leading social enterprise empowering people to successfully run a business. Through our events, we bring our advisors, presenters and members together to share their expert knowledge in the interest of helping each other to learn and grow to their highest potential. Uh, so we have partnered with the Northern Beaches Council to provide this digital solutions program. Uh, so today's workshop is the fourth of the six sessions we'll be bringing to you over the next month to help you and your business. Uh, if you haven't already done so, we encourage you to register uh, for the next upcoming sessions. Even if you can't attend uh, live on the day, we will be recording each ses session and sending it out. Uh, so the next two we have coming up, uh, um, marketing, digital marketing foundations and everything you need to know about Google My Business. Uh, we're also providing the opportunity for you to receive one-to-one -one business advice with one of our business advisors for free through the federal government's ASVAS program. ASVAS Digital Solutions provides small businesses with low cost, high quality advice on a range of digital solutions to help them meet their business needs and grow their digital abilities. Uh, so if you'd like to book in your free session, you can simply call the office or simply reply back to a thank you email you receive in coming days. Uh, so before I throw to the presenter, I'm just gonna run through some quick housekeeping points. Uh, so please have your sound on mute unless you're speaking. Uh, use the chat box to ask questions and ask questions at any time. Uh, let us know if you're having any audio or video issues. And as mentioned earlier, this session is being recorded. So now without further ado, I'd like to introduce today's presenter, Realize Business Advisor, Jessica Alfonso. Hi everyone. There's some new faces I see. Oh, that's a familiar face. Hi Charlie, how are you? And uh, if you could, um, I would really love it and encourage it if you guys can come on video. I don't know if you've ever presented on Zoom, but it's nice to see faces. So um, thank you so much for that new face I see. Hello, nice to see you. I, I can't see your name. I'm not sure why. Ah, there's Laura Kelly. Hello, hello. Hi, Charlie. Beautiful. Amazing. So um, I'm part of the ASFAS program, uh, which has been around since 1989. Um, and we empower people to successfully run businesses. So my area of expertise is around the digital marketing side of things. Um, and, and what I do is my, my mission is to empower business owners to be masterful in their own digital marketing. So I help them create websites, Facebook ads, help them a little bit with their SEO. Basically, I, I do the works, but my, my real specialty and focus is on the advertising side of things. Um, so I've been, I've had the amazing opportunity to be part of this hyper growth startup. I started off volunteering. Uh, there were four of us in a co-working space and now it's this multi-million dollar company. So I learned a lot of amazing things about Facebook along the journey, and I would love to share it all with you and to see how to how it would make sense for you to advertise online uh, and, and also your social media. So do feel free to ask questions. There, there will be little gaps in which um, I'm happy to answer questions. And um, I guess uh, let's begin. Uh, so. I'm just going to use this view here. I don't know if you guys are seeing all of my screen or just some of my screen, but basically today we're, we're going to have a look at some tools that you can use to save time. Because I know, I know how involved it can be to be a business owner. I mean, I've been one myself. And so um, today we can touch on some things that will maximize your efficiency, save you time. And then we'll also focus on the messaging. The, the messaging component. So we'll, I know you we've already touched that a little bit, but I'll also go over that because I can't stress enough how important that is. Um, I guess first things first, it is so key to find your platform. Um, I know that um, the, the more, basically the general rule I have is the more platforms that you have, 
um, the more difficult it's going or, or the more work it's going to be. So my recommendation as a small business owner myself is to choose two platforms and do an excellent job at them, even one, one or two. Um, and it just depends on when you're, where your market is. So just to roughly touch it, um, Facebook, pretty much everyone is on Facebook, but it's steering towards an older sort of crowd these days. Um, LinkedIn is your professional network. So if, you, if your business is a B2B, if you deal with a lot of other businesses, then LinkedIn is a spectacular platform for that. And we can touch on um, some, some tips and tricks along the way. Um, Pinterest is more like a visual display. Um, the, the purchasing propensity is actually really high. I don't know about you. I, I, I've been really loving in, uh, Pinterest lately. And every time I go there, I swear to you, I buy something online. So it, it can, the, the people there are, are ready to be inspired and ready to purchase something. Twitter is more like, um, it, it, it targets certain things. So if you're around the gaming space or the crypto space or even the, the business to business space, it can be a really great platform. It's a bit more conversational in nature. Um, TikTok, and I ha don't have Snapchat, but TikTok and Snapchat are definitely for your young people today. So if you're targeting teens, especially, then those platforms would be ideal. They're, they're the ideal ones to communicate with your crowd. And then Instagram is if you've got a really visual um, display. So say you're an artist or, or, or a coach or someone inspirational, even a cafe, then um, Instagram is an ideal platform. And then YouTube, um, if, if you like presentations, if you like talking, if you like tips and tricks, that's sort of more your platform uh, but my only disclaimer with youtube is just be mindful because it can um, video content can take a lot of time to curate um, so that's just one thing i'd advise uh, but but bottom line is choose one or two and do an excellent job not a mediocre job of all all of them but a really awesome job of one or two let's have a look oh so you got here um, social media, get, I, I categorize it into two components. So you've got here on the left, the likes and shares and comments, and um, which is all really great for, for a, from a brand awareness perspective. But then you've got the other side of it, which is more like the advertising side. So things like getting bookings, uh, buying an item online, um, subscribing to an email list, that's um, that's a more transactional side of things. So I'll show you what that looks like in the interface. Example of advertising. Uh, so I'm just going to go and I'm going to share my screen. Now, most of you are familiar with um, this kind of Facebook page, right? Um, maybe a lot of you have already a, a Facebook page um, or not. Um, so, so this is what it looks like. Most of you know it, it's attached to your personal account. Um, but what a lot of people don't realize is that there, there is another platform. I'm just going to move this down. There, there is a whole new ads manager platform. Um, just going to move you guys around. Don't know why that's looking so big. There we go. Uh, so this is known as your Facebook ads manager, and this is intended for advertising. So anything like a booking or a sign up or a purchase is all done through here. And in a minute, I'll take you a tour as to how it looks. But most people uh, sort of go into this platform thinking that they will get all the transactions. So thinking that they'll get all the sales uh, or they'll get all the email signups. But these that these kind of platforms aren't really tailored to, to do those sales. It, it's more in this back interface. Um, and, and in a minute, we'll, I'll show you how, how to create an ad. I'll touch on the Facebook pixel. It's a really, um, it's my favorite part of advertising. I find that the, it's the most transactional um, or the most straightforward. Um, 
And in fact, what I'll do is um, I will run an ad. Oops, my screen is jumping. I'm just going to turn this off. Is I will go ahead and run an ad now so I can show you a little bit about what the interface looks like. So um, to create an ad, um, it's pretty much there. But and you can the, the first thing that Facebook's going to ask you is, um, what would you like to do? Would you like to buy some Facebook likes? Would you like to install an app? Would you like to just get reach um, just for brand awareness? Or would you like uh, to do a purchase? So I'm going to go here. I, I really like to use the Facebook pixel and I will touch on this in a little bit. But the conversions aspect is basically the Facebook pixel. So I'm going to go and continue. And it will go ahead and create this. Now, this is all um, part of it. I'm just going to click next. Um, this is the ad set. So the ad set is there to ask you um, pretty much like what, um, what sort of platform or, or what sort of thing would you like to do? So um, you can do all sorts of things. You can do that lead, which means sign up. You can do purchase. You can take people to your cart. And then you can do another ad that, that will get them to sort of fulfill the rest of that transaction. So add to cut would be uh, a really good one. But um, bottom line is you need to know your customer journey. And I think next week I am going to touch on that journey so you can get clear on your events and what that all entails. Um, so here... Uh, you can choose your spend and basically how Facebook works is you, you pay to be seen. Um, and so the, the more budget you put, the more people it will go out to. It's kind of like the analogy I have is the fish in the basket. Uh, so you gotta, if you've got a really wide net, you're going to attract more fish. Generally speaking, uh, a purchase conversion on, on these platforms are around 2%. And I'll touch on that at the end, but um, this is what it looks like to advertise. You can put um, a start date and an end date, um, especially if you find you might forget to switch off your ad. I'd recommend an end date for that. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, just keep your finger on the pulse. Um, when it comes to this advertising, you have to be so on the ball. Otherwise, your money can just go. Um, and here you've got the platform for um, putting your avatar together. I'm sure um, you've heard about doing all the avatars before. You can choose um, geographical locations. You can even choose worldwide, but I'd recommend you split it by country or by, um, you know, by language. Um, so people are sort of seeing the same type of ad. And uh, you've got your age range, which you can choose. You, if you've got a, say, a female-centric business, then you can choose female-centric. Otherwise, uh, you can choose both. And I really like this. You can choose the interest uh, targeting. Um, so you can choose whatever you like. I'm going to put, um, I'm just going to put here for, um, just as an example, um, maybe you like to target artists. So you got this and, and it will filter it down. So the population here has gone from 18 million to 4.2 million. So every time you do that, it, it will sort of refine the population. So now we're not going just for all Australians, we're going for the artists in Australia. And so you can put more suggestions here so I can put maybe something like creativity. And let's say you're an art teacher, just for argument's sake. So you got artists and creativity, so that's 7.1 million. And then if I narrow the audience, what's gonna happen is if you see that little Venn diagram is I'm gonna target people who are artistic and who like to learn. So I'm targeting both. Uh, so right here, like in the middle of that Venn diagram. So I can narrow it down to people who are learning or, or like to learn. And so that's gone down to 4.8 million people. I mean, this is a really arbitrary thing, but generally speaking, you want to be targeting around half a million people for an effective ad. You don't want it to be too narrow that it doesn't really reach anyone. 
I mean, if you think about it, the conversion metric is 2%. So you, you kind of want to cast a broad net, but nothing too broad and not too narrow. It's, it, it's really hard for every specific person to kind of really know what to look out for. But if you really want more detail about this, I, I actually do um, a forecasting and I can help you calculate this. So do feel free to have a session with me so we can calculate whether or not, um, first of all, whether or not this is actually a feasible solution for you. And secondly, what it would look like your budget um, when it comes to budgeting for these things, it can really vary depending on who you're targeting, what your industry is, because some industries have a really good um, conversion to sales ratio, whereas other ones, it might need a little bit more advertising. So uh, do feel free to have a session with me and we can discuss your particular situation in a lot more detail. Um, but once you're happy with your placement, oh, sorry, with your audience, then we can move on to placement. And you can choose it. I, I do recommend you leave it automatic for advertising, but you can choose it to, to be manual. And now maybe some of you know or don't know, but Instagram is part of the advertising platforms that Facebook offers. So when you do these sort of ads in the ads manager, you do have the choice of doing Instagram ads. And then you have also this thing called audience network. And this is really great. Uh, if you've got something like, um, like a game app, I, I was using an app or I was advertising an app in one of my projects. And we found that it was really effective because you know when you play games and you see those ads, um, part of that is owned by Facebook. Many companies own it, but part of it is owned by Facebook. So if, if that's really relevant, then that's great. Um, other things that I've seen in the audience network are news articles. So if you, if you ever read a news article and you see something on the right column, then that's also part of the audience network and it can be really great. Um, then you've got Messenger as an option. It's not really, it's not really too popular right now, but it, it is there. And um, what the Facebook Pixel does is it will kind of stream through all of these and, and it does its own regression analysis to find out which is the better one for you. So it might be that Instagram does really well for you. It might be that it's just Facebook. Um, so that's why I normally leave it automatic. Uh, but you can go ahead and like down the line, you can chop and change once you have more information about um, people. Or, or about where people are coming from. And then you've got this, which is the cost control. So say that you know that it, it takes about $40 for a purchasing client to come and buy from you. So once you start seeing the average, then you can tell Facebook to cap your purchases at 40. Um, so you can put that as a cost control and that's optional. And then for the new ad, uh, here's where you put all your creative. So your, uh, your image and your text. So I'm just gonna add a, a placeholder um, video just to show you what it would look like. Um, so you can kind of preview it here. You can put some text that uh, what people will see is your video first and foremost. Then they'll sort of see this text and, and then they'll see this headline on the bottom, which I'm just creating now. Oh, it's not coming up for here. Oh, it's because it needs the URL. So I'm just going to type in a URL. Yeah, so, so that's what that looks like. So that's what people get to see. And you can sort of preview it, revise it. Um, you can change these buttons if there's a, an offer that's a little bit more familiar. So if you can say uh, book now if it's a booking. And you can go ahead and publish that. So that's what it looks like to have the, um, the ad running. And the, the thing with the Facebook pixel as well, it's um, just so I can get an idea, are you guys aware um, 
that about the Facebook pixel or is this completely new? Just I'll just get you to raise your hand if you are aware. Jessica, could you maybe let them know sort of what a pixel is um, and then go from there? Yeah, of course. So the, the Facebook pixel is, um, have you ever had that experience where you kind of go in into a website, say it's for a, a dress or a pair of shoes and you click on the website and you're about to purchase it and then you, you kind of go, no, I shouldn't and, and you leave the website, but then you find that they're following you and these ads are all over your Facebook and you're going, what's going on? It's like, it's like they're following me. And so that, that experience that you get is, um, is from the Facebook pixel. What happens is on your website, you can put a little strip of code that lets people know that you visited. So say I go in and I look at the dress, then Facebook knows that I've had a look, but I've not gone in ahead and purchased it. Um, so it's really powerful. It's really powerful for, it's called retargeting. It means targeting you again for about seven days until you go ahead and purchase that. So that's, it's really useful for that. The other useful thing that it has is it's really good for measurement. So say if you spend $20 a day, you have more of an idea that say it costs $4, um, $4 per person that registers. So then you can optimize for the cost. And, and see if you can make it a little bit cheaper. And the other thing that the Facebook pixels are really great for, it's actually using some uh, sort of regression analysis to pull the people with the highest propensity to purchase forward. So it's really, really amazing for that. We, we've actually done extensive research in the hypergrowth startup I used to be part of. We, we did a lot of research and we did the, the normal sort of ads before um, that just would take people into the website and then the Facebook pixel ads. And we found that with statistical significant difference, the Facebook pixel is far more effective at bringing people into that sort of whatever you'd like to fulfill, be it a booking or a purchase, it, it is very effective. Um, so that's pretty much the rundown about the Facebook pixel. And I'm just going to open it to the floor, to the panel, see if um, anyone's got any questions at all. Um, so we did have a couple, a couple of questions come through, Jessica. Would you be able to step through um, the group as to how you got to the ad component page um, and just sort of give a run through of how you get to that, uh, that yeah, page and how to get started? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I guess bottom line is it's... Um, that there's not really um, a, so you'll have to set it up. Um, it and my disclaimer is it is a little bit fidgety to to set it up, uh, but that's what we're here for. So um, do feel free to reach out if you have trouble setting it up. But if you go business business.facebook.com um, slash ads manager, you'll usually find it there. Otherwise, the journey into it is on your Facebook page. You can go to the Ad Center and click on All Ads. Just slowing it down because I know I can go a little bit fast here. So Ad Center on the very left-hand side, All Ads. You go to the bottom and then you go Show More Details in Ads Manager. And that's where it takes you straight into the Ads Manager. Um, now, because there, there has been this um, new update with, uh, with iOS, the process has been a little bit trickier. Um, so it needs to be set up um, really effectively. Um, there, there's a few more steps with verification. Um, so I do stress um, to, to make sure you follow the process. Um, to go, you can go into ads manager um, and in the settings page, you can create what's called a business account, which is kind of like the cap. So you've got the business account, which is the overarching thing. And inside the business account sits your ads manager, your Instagram, your Facebook page, and then that's all connected with your personal account. 
um, that there is a lot of moving parts, I have to say. So do feel free to reach out because there, there, there is a lot going on these days. Facebook's just become a giant um, or e even more so than before. Um, any more questions, Courtney? Um, with the ads uh, component, do you have to have uh, your credit card details on there or any sort of payment? Yeah, so um, you do have to install that in. And I think Facebook takes your uh, details every 30 days. So okay. it rolls out in a 30 day invoicing period. Okay, perfect. And another question uh, from Neva. So can you choose the timing of the ad publishing? Yeah, you absolutely can. That's something I didn't touch on, but you can sort of schedule it. Say you don't want any calls after 5 p.m. You can absolutely do that. Okay, perfect. That's all the questions are that we had for at the moment. Okay, fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, share this slide deck again. All right. Um, now let's see how this goes. Perfect. Uh, so when it comes to finding your platform, you've got your channel. Um, like I said, choose one or two and do an amazing job at that. Um, then uh, we can, we're also going to touch on finding your competitors. So having a look, that's why I put the, the man with the um, eyeglass, have a look at what they're, what they're up to, um, who they are, wh which channels they're sitting on and how they're messaging and when. And because you've got your day-to-day -day tasks as a business owner, I've, I've sort of been, I'm very considerate of that. So we can also touch on the fact that um, starting out, my recommendation is two to three times a week with one or two platforms and then build up from there. So I'll touch on creating an effective uh, posting schedule. So I know uh, that um, you've had a lot of branding stuff already to touch on, but I just wanted to reach out and see the, and have a talk to you about the execution of it. Since um, when you're creating the, an effective posting schedule, I, I often like to do it when um, you, most people check out their social media in the morning when they're commuting to work. Maybe not so much these days because um, everyone's working from home, but maybe while they're having breakfast during lunch. And then maybe from six to eight o'clock, just after they've had dinner. Then they've got their day-to-day -day operations. Um, or you've got your day-to-day -day operations to cover. So just being really mindful. So if you've got, say, a YouTube channel, um, would, would you be able to manage that and to also manage your day-to-day? -day? That's just something to consider. And then the other thing is your competition. So if your competition um, is not on one platform and say they're a giant in your industry, then I'd recommend you to give that some second thought. One example I've got in mind is I had a, a client in the tutoring services and they asked me about Facebook ads. And initially I went, you know what? This is a great idea. Let's do some Facebook ads. But the more research I kept doing, I actually found out that they, um, it, it just uh, didn't make sense. Um, I found the, the market giant was, um, I don't know if it still is, but it was Kumon back in the day. And, uh, and I started researching Kumon to find that they were barely running any ads, maybe one in, just in the US. And I just went, this is not the platform. If this, mar if this market giant is not spending any money on Facebook, then it's probably not a good idea to spend that on Facebook. Uh, but what I do see the competition doing is they do put themselves up on the Google Maps a lot. So that's a way better strategy. So that's why it's, it makes a lot of sense to have a look at where your competition is, particularly your big aspirational competitors and then sort of go from there. So we've got some social media scheduling tools and apps. Uh, so it means that you don't have to sort of go, oh my God, it's 12 o'clock time for a selfie. 
you can actually schedule these every week or every fortnight and, and sort of set it up and not have to worry about it until you do the next batch of ads, which is just wonderful. And what you can also do is you can, um, you can schedule ahead of time in multiple platforms as well, which is so time efficient. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you an example of what that looks like. I don't know if you can still see my screen, um, but I've got here buffer set up. And look, all of these will, will sort of do the same thing. They're, they're all very similar. Um, and so what you can do is I've got here Facebook and Instagram connected. And my other disclaimer is to set, set up buffer or any of these apps. It, it is, it can be a little bit convoluted. It can be a little bit clunky, but once it's done, it's done. Um, so I've got mine set up here. And so this is the Facebook interface. This is the uh, Instagram interface. And if I wanna post something, I can have the option of posting both at the same time or say just Facebook or just Instagram. So you see how they unhighlight and highlight. That means that you're gonna post on one or two. But because I don't have time for specific posts, I'm a business owner, I don't have time for uh, being really specific. I just post the same post on the two platforms. So I've got here my, my wording. In fact, I'll go ahead and erase this so that I can, I can start from scratch. Yes, yeah, so I can go ahead and add my image. So I've got this example image and I can put some text here and that will be exactly the same for Facebook as it will be for Instagram. So I'm just waiting for this. I think I made my video a little too big for this presentation. So it's just gonna take a little while. But then you see here, uh, once that's done, I can go ahead and customize it for each network. And, and the great thing about this is, um, because on Instagram, Instagram is very dependent on hashtags, but Facebook is not. And if you have you if you have hashtags on Facebook, look, it's not the it's not the end of the world. It's not the worst thing in the world. But what it means is, you can um, it, it, you can then look like you're just pushing content out. So my my preference is to take the hashtags off Facebook and just leave it for Instagram. So your, your ads could look a bit more polished and professional, and it can look like you've actually taken the time to curate them for each of your network. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna customize it for each network. And then I can go into Instagram, just Instagram here, and I can put my hashtags in so I can go ahead and do my hashtags. And, um, I would have by then done my hashtag research. I think you can put up to 30 hashtags. Um, one of the websites I like to use, just to give me some ideas, because the other thing is you've got to come up with different hashtags every time that you do a post. Otherwise, Instagram does this thing. It's called shadow banning. It means that they ban you without even knowing that you've been banned. So to prevent that, uh, we've got to do different hashtags every time, but something that can maximize your time doing so is you can go ahead and you can go and use a hashtag generator. So I literally Google hashtag generator and I found this one, um, but any hashtag generator will do the trick. There's also many apps in the app market that you can choose. And you can insert a word. So if I'm going for the word artist, I can go ahead and generate that. And it'll generate 30 hashtags. And then I'll find the ones that are relevant to me and, and discard the ones that are not relevant. So I can go ahead and copy that. And then I can go and paste that onto my scheduler and then take off the, the ones that are not, um, like this one would not be applicable, let's say. And, and once I'm done and, and I've set up my post and my hashtags, I can go ahead 
I can share it now, but my preference is to schedule it um, because if I share things then and there, what happens is there might be a typo or a, or a mistake. So I like to schedule things and then I come back, I revise to make sure that everything, all the I's are dotted, the T's are crossed. So you can go ahead, schedule it. You can put the dates, the time. Um, so I like to do mine at around lunchtime, uh, but that's just me. So you can do it whenever you like. And like I said, people tend to look at their social media in the mornings at lunch and after they finish work or even during work, who knows? Um, so that is um, how these schedulers work. Let me go back to the slide deck. Actually, any questions on, on anything that I've just shared now? Um, so we did have a great question from Neva come through in regards to the sizing of images. So do you change the size of your images uh, to suit Facebook or Instagram? Um, she finds changing the size of the images quite time consuming. Yeah, well, um, for Facebook and Instagram, I think you're okay to have the same size. Um, what's normally recommended is 1080 by 1080 pixels. Um, but what you can do is I always Google the dimensions. So say you want to have the same image for LinkedIn. So I just, I, I literally Google it. I go LinkedIn dimensions and it'll give me the, the dimensions by pixels. So that is for square, it's 1200 by 1200. Um, and what you can do is, I, I don't know if you use Canva. I, I'm a big fan of, I practically live on Canva. Um, and I've got Canva Pro and something that saves me quite a lot of time is I can go ahead and resize it. So say this image here, I can go ahead and change it to the LinkedIn dimension. So I can either go and custom make it here or I can go into, into here and I can find LinkedIn and go ahead and resize it. So that was let's say, yeah, 1200 by 1200, because I, I want a square image. Um, so I can go ahead and do that and go ahead and copy and resize if I want a brand new copy, otherwise just resize. And because it's square, I don't have to do much, but if it was a rectangle, I'll have to just tidy up all the assets. So uh, these things, I might have to move them around and make sure that everything fits and looks nice. Um, so that really helps with the, the time consuming factor. Um, but yeah, that as far as I know, that's really um, in terms of resizing, that's the fastest way. And then I just schedule it onto LinkedIn or I schedule it onto whichever other platform needs that specific dimension. So um, like I said, the, the most time consuming thing that I have is to do two platforms and to do them really well. Otherwise, you will find that you'll have to resize and then do maybe specific things for each of them. And um, yeah, like my basic rule is the more platforms you have, the more work. So I hope that answers your question. And um, so we had, yep, so Neva just had a, a comment saying um, I, she uses Canva to resize, uh, but when you do a month's worth of posts, it's over 40 images to resize and placing. Uh, the log in the right spot. Um, so, and she's also noted, is it better to schedule using Facebook directly rather than using a scheduler for higher engagement and reach? Um, in, terms of, um, in terms of the scheduler, it doesn't really matter uh, which one you use, but I do find when I post it directly, I, I schedule it on the, um, on the Facebook page. I, I find that I can go ahead and add budget so I can boost it immediately. So then I don't have to come back and boost it. And that saves me a little bit of time. Uh, but in terms of engagement, I don't think it does much. The, the other thing you can do to save you some time here is say these are different ones. I'm just going to do this. But you can go ahead and once you're happy with all of that, you can go ahead and resize them all for the specific platform as well. So you don't have to just, uh, you know, do them one by one, but do the whole, whole lot and then post them. Yeah. Um, so I hope that answers your question. 
Uh, Courtney, um, any other questions? Uh, that's all the questions that we, that we have at the moment in the chat box. Okay, great. So where was I? Here. I'm just going to go ahead and present that again. The other thing is finding and retaining followers as part of the social media 101. So what we've covered now is we've covered all the posting side of things, uh, the, pretty much the content side. And uh, bottom line is do two, uh, one or two platforms, great content, anything engaging that your audience will like, do your individual conventions on each of the social media platforms, and then schedule it ahead of time. And once you've scheduled that, there, there's sort of two components to um, a social media strategy. There's the, there's the content and there's the growth. And um, liking and sharing your stuff. Uh, so I'm just going to touch on the different things you can do with each of these different platforms, um, given that Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram do seem to be the most popular. Now, um, in 2017, Facebook did declare that you have um, or, or that, that they're trending for organic to go down. And nowadays people have to pay more. So you might find it very difficult to get some traction. Uh, on your Facebook advertising. And it means that you may have to look into investing a little bit of budget behind your posts. Normally, I recommend small business owners to post around about three times a week. Um, and, oh, and I forgot to mention that the bottom line of posting is if instead of you know having to feel like you post every day to focus on quality, uh, focus What I've, I've normally done in the past is I've gone ahead and um, just going to go back to the page. I, I normally put about $5 per post. Just going to show you one of the, so I can put with one, here we go. So I can normally put a budget. Um, let's, I'm just trying to find a good post here. And uh, Five dollars. It just depends on on your engagement on the quality of your post. But what you can do is you can go ahead and uh, invite people who are not part of your page, but but have liked your content. So um, yeah, every time I post, I put five. And if I'm feeling really optimistic, ten dollars a day. But just make sure you budget for that. And say if you post, if you're posting three times a week, five dollars per post, I'd say to budget around about sixty-five to seventy dollars a month on your social media posting for Facebook. And normally, I I wouldn't recommend buying likes, but because it's getting harder and harder these days, um, one of the things you can do is have a likes campaign and perhaps invest about 100 to 150 dollars a month on that to grow your facebook likes and just when you do make sure you know who your avatar is cuz at the end of the day social media is a loudspeaker so whatever content you have it's just going to amplify it and if it's great content and it resonates with that avatar that it's going to go really well, but if it doesn't, then it's really going to cost you some advertising spend. And with Instagram, uh, 
it's a little bit more organic than Facebook, but it is trending to be paid right now. Hashtags are so key. So finding those relevant hashtags is really important. But on top of that, you uh, I have what's called a growth strategy. So I'll show you what that looks like. I'm just going to log into my Instagram. So what you can do is you can go to a particular competitor. So this one, this page is all about gratitude. So I'm just going to go to this gratitude page here. And I see they've got a great big following. So what I do is I go ahead and see who's liked their posts. And, and then I find if they fit my avatar or not. So I'm just looking for someone that might be fitting. So maybe this person here might be a fit. So I check out their profile and I go, yep, yeah, they would be a really great person to follow my profile. And so what I do is I just go ahead and I like their post and I make a comment. But when you do this, make sure it sounds very authentic. Make sure it sounds like you, because right now there's a whole lot of um, different bots. There's all these um, automations and bots and uh, an authentic comment goes a long way on Instagram. So I normally, to grow a page, I normally spend about 30 minutes a day on this strategy. So it could be while you're commuting or while you're doing something, just to dedicate that time. Um, and if, if you find that you don't really quite have the time for every day, maybe try do two or three times a week to, to grow your, your followers um, with Instagram. It's not like Facebook where you can go and buy likes. You actually have to grow them yourself. And this is one of the strategies that I know. It is a little bit time consuming. Um, so again, you need to know who your avatar is before going ahead and, and, uh, and finding different people. And then on LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn is really great um, if you're a B2B and if you've got a personal profile there is a great deal of organic reach organic meaning free not paid uh, by the way I forgot to mention that detail but there's a lot of potential for a lot of um, organic reach and if you've really leveraged your networks on LinkedIn then if you've really networked your way and people know you offline as well and they know who you are then it's also really great to kind of uh what i'd like to use linkedin for is for top of mind to just remind people that you're around and um i have found that i have had people approach me on linkedin by just posting every now and again it doesn't have to be a lot a little goes a long way but i normally post about once every month and just there, just to remind people that I'm there, it's just to be seen. And uh, it's a really great way for networking. Something I do as well is I, um, I message people whom I've met in networking events. I reach out to them on LinkedIn and I, it's all about the coffee catch-ups or Zoom meetings to see if there's potential for collaboration. So bottom line is to really focus on the personal, your personal LinkedIn especially starting out a business. And then later down the line, you can focus on the business profile. Uh, but because the business profile is the way it is and the algorithm set up this way, the reach and the interactions wouldn't go as far as your personal profile would. And uh, this is uh, more of a professional platform, but um, nowadays I think people are putting a little bit more casual things, um, things with their colleagues, their family, that sort of thing. So also don't, don't be shy to include a little bit of that. Um, but that's sort of um, the way to grow it. And the way to grow it on LinkedIn that I would recommend is to, if you're a, if you're a B2B uh, business, it's just to network in person or, or on Zoom or meet people outside and then bring them into the platform as a reminder. Um, and the, the one call to action that I do have here is to, 
um, is to always have, or the, the tip I have is to always have one call to action. I know some sometimes people have sort of two different questions to ask people, and it can get a little bit confusing. So just make sure you've got just the one call to action. Uh, like and share, or, or just like this post if you agree, or comment below, just so you can be really intentional, not, not sort of asking them all these different things, like and comment and then go sign up here and do this. It might just be a little too much for people. Um, so in your worksheet, there is an activity. And that activity is uh, to go ahead and give a go, give it a go to create your posting schedule. And, and while, while that happens as well, um, do feel free to reach out and ask any questions. I'm just going to open the floor to some questions now. I will be yet to have any questions in the chat box at the moment. No questions? Okay. okay. When I normally do this, and it, you'll find it in your worksheet, I normally like to start off with um, going, okay, which platform am I going to do? And if you're starting this out, I recommend just doing uh, two and just posting at the same time, just to save you some time and just so you can get the flow of it. But say for me, it would be Facebook and LinkedIn. And so every post I have is Facebook and LinkedIn. And, and then I find out when I'd like to have it. So I say it's Monday, Mondays and Fridays or Mondays and Wednesdays. And then I go ahead and I find out, oh, do I want to do a blog this week or a video this week? And then you can start to sort of tidy it up a little bit and go, okay, well, if we're doing a blog here, then, or, or if we're doing an image here, then we'll find all the relevant hashtags. Uh, we'll budget $5 for this on Facebook. But it really works to go ahead and um, plan ahead of time. So you, you don't have to kind of keep sort of putting images in and sort of working on it day to day. So we had a question come through from Karen. Um, so she's a comment. So does anyone read blogs anymore? Are you finding that blogs are still um, an important part of content or have they slowly dropped off a little bit? Yeah, well, I think most people do tend to like video. Um, just hands down, most people are visual, but there are some people that do prefer reading blogs. And it also depends because sometimes people uh, might be commuting or they might be doing things and they just probably prefer to read. Um, I guess it, it just depends on um, who it is specifically, but there are some people, not, not many, most people I know prefer videos, but there are a few that do enjoy reading blogs. The other thing about blogs is that it's really good for your SEO. So if you have a blog on your website and you're bringing traffic in through, say, LinkedIn, then that's gonna boost your website right up as well. Um, and another thing that might work if you find that the time allows is that you can write a blog and you can embed a video on, on top of the blog. So if people wanna watch the video, they can press play. And then if people wanna read the blog, they can just scroll down and read the blog. And so, with videos, how long do you think uh, a video should be? Ah. Uh, yeah, that's the, there's no um, sort of hard and fast rule. I guess um, I'm going to pull the quality card here. Quality will trump over everything. But I think most videos, and it depends, if it's an advertising video, you want it to be around 30 seconds. But if it's a video on a particular topic, you'd want it to be around one or two minutes. Um, but yeah, it, I mean, generally speaking, you'd rather have, say, a five minute quality video than a two minute so so video. Okay, great. And we had one more question from Neba. So, with the $5 per Facebook post for advertising, is the Facebook post boosted? 
Yes, that's exactly what it is. That's a boosted post. Okay, great. Um, there's just one more from Karen, sorry. So she's got, um, how many words should the blog be? Uh, don't you lose people after about 15 to 20 seconds on a video? Yeah, generally you would lose people after 15 to 20 seconds. So the it's really important to know who your avatar is and finding something really, uh, really relevant uh, to, to sort of communicate. Uh, so if you do find that relevant thing, so if it's, if it's for the like, shares and comments side of it, then you would want the video to be around about, uh, yeah, two minutes with interesting, engaging, informative content. But if it's for advertising, you want it to be around 30 seconds, up to a minute, because people's attention span, people's commitment to, to sort of view that is not quite there yet. Okay, great. We've gotten through uh, the questions that were in the chat box at the moment. Okay, great. Um, would you guys, um, shall we sort of start moving on if there are no more questions? Yep. Yeah, let's move on. Okay, great. Um, just moving the screen around. Just going to go ahead and present. Now, would anyone be okay to share a particular um, example that they have in mind? Just to sort of take this out of being conceptual and put it into reality. Would there be any brave volunteers? If not, I can go ahead and share um, some of oops, some of the examples I've got in mind. Um, like I said, I tend to keep mine very simple. So um, say for the gratitude journal that I have, I normally uh, post the, the three times a week on Facebook, Instagram, and I've just sort of um, been feeding that through, but I've been focusing more on growing the followers. So it's more than a thousand followers just for social proof. One of the things is um, having more likes, shares and follows does not equate to your bottom line. That, so um, likes and shares and comments is purely for branding purposes. But then uh, you've got the advertising side, which is actually the, the one that's generating you those leads or bookings or purchases. But don't get me wrong, they can go hand in hand. Because down the line, you want to be also looking at uh, branding yourself. And if you look like a trustworthy and legitimate brand with a little bit of a following, people are more likely to purchase from you. It, it's just one of those um, unquantifiable things, but it makes sense to do so. So while you have your advertising sort of running in the background, it's important to spend a little bit of time just uh, curating and generating your ads. Um, and I don't know if we've got any people here in the B2B space, uh, but I definitely love using LinkedIn. Like I said, I post in it about once a month and the little post can go a long way or I put an image or I do an infographic or I can do a video if I feel courageous enough to do so. I know video, uh, videoing oneself is not uh, the easiest thing for anyone that's tried it. Um, but that keeps me top of mind and that just keeps people, reminds people who I am. And then when they're ready, they, they have tended to reach out to me and be ready to be in business. Okay, so I'm going to move on to engaging with influencers and collaborators. So an influencer is someone that can endorse your product. One of the examples that comes to mind is um, a hair product called Functions by Beauty. And they, they've pretty much gone to all the YouTubers around and they're getting sponsored by it. Another one I keep seeing is uh, Skillshare. Uh, Skillshare is kind of like um, an academy. You buy, you buy a subscription for about $20. 
and, and you have this unlimited sort of platform where you can go ahead and learn different things. It, it's actually really great. I, I love all those platforms, but um, what they have done is they've gone to all these different people and asked to be endorsed and they actually pay for it. So people with quite a big following, um, there's all these, it, I don't know if anyone is in the beauty space here, but if you are, then that's one of the strategies to consider to go approach a, a big sort of follower. Um, you, you, what you'd normally do is you'd approach the agency that runs, that manages them. They're usually managed by an agency and that agency will give you a quote. And then when you do sort of pay them, then you get a mention by them. So that's generally how it works. It can be a little bit spiky. So some, some cases can be really great. It can be very effective. Other cases, it, it can not be as effective. So it, it's one of those, um, one of those strategies. It's very, um, it's very much trending right now, but it can, it can sort of bring a bit of a fad. It's not really a consistent strategy, but it can be great if you want a quick win. The other one is um, always have a look at who your competitors are working with. And if there's an influencer around or, and what kind of influencer um, there is, then you've got to go ahead and um, look at what a collaborator is. Um, or oh, a collaborator is a little bit different from an influencer. And this is really great if you do handle a lot of business to business. Um, but say, say in a wedding example, right? You've got um, you've got a person who's looking to buy a wedding dress. And then while they're trying on dresses, they try the cake and they go, this cake is delicious. Um, do you know anyone that, um, or do you know who made this? And they say, actually this person down the road and they can make your wedding cake too. So it's finding people that service your, your clientele, but they do different things, complementary things. So they're not your direct competition, but they, they're, more, they're more so collaborating with you. Um, so for my own business, the example I have is website designers, because I don't really want to make a website and they don't really want to do the marketing. So we kind of have a bit of a partnership when there's someone that wants a website, I refer them. And then if they want marketing, they refer me. So it, it just provides, it's a really great way to collaborate with other people. And um, it, it's my personal preference in terms of marketing. It's just hands down. You find the win-win the in every situation. And you can even find if there is a gap. Um, so say, for me, I've got a friend who deals with very large accounts on Facebook. He works directly with Facebook. And we're in collaboration with each other. So if, if someone is spending uh, a larger budget on Facebook, I'm more likely to recommend them to him and, and whether they want the doing. Whereas as someone that's uh, starting out on Facebook, um, he recommends them to me. So even though we're both uh, Facebook advertisers, we have, we have a little bit of a, a, a system there where we're, we're sharing people, we're sending people to each other. And so it's a really great strategy because it can give you consistency as well. In ter um, in t instead of it being this spiky thing or having it being having your business being so acquisition heavy, you can actually start bringing more people in. And uh, yeah, so have a look in your in your own circumstance, in your own business, who you could be partnering up with. Who are the people that are servicing? And some are not not all businesses have it, but a great majority do. And if you can really leverage that, and you can really leverage the win-win, and even bundle packaging, then that's also really great. Oh, what does that say there? And yeah, um, bottom line is find what you can offer them. Most people are looking for. Um, for, for their own clients. So if, if you can offer them clients, um, then you can reciprocate. Uh, so this marketing strategy is very much on generosity. So if you give people something, you can, they will also give you something back. Yeah, so the, the tip 
that I have here is to always seek things that have mutual benefit and, and find a way to, to literally collaborate. Any questions about that? Um, so we did have a question come through from Laura in regards to um, how much would you expect to pay an influencer? Oh, it depends. Um, it, it can range from, um, you know, the hundreds to the thousands. Um, I think one campaign that I saw was, let's say it starts, it can start from 700, but it can also go up to the thousands. Um, and the more popular that they are, the, the more they will charge as well. The best thing you can do is there's a site called Tribe, T-R-I-B-E, and you can uh, have a look there for the different types of influences. Um, oh, and the other thing you want to be looking out for is just because someone has a massive following doesn't mean that they necessarily have great engagement. Have you seen those um, Instagram pages, for example, where they have, let's say, hundreds and thousands of followers, but then they only have five likes or 27 likes and you're going, what's going on there? So they're not really, they, they wouldn't be a powerful influencer because your message wouldn't really be getting across. They're, they're literally doing that for show. Okay, great. That's all the questions uh, that we have in the chat box at the moment in regards to influencers. Yep, great. Okay, so I'll move along. Um, so there, there is an activity to start mapping out your customer's journey and to find who could be a great influencer or a collaborator. And, and there, there's a little bit of a, a structure there where you can start practicing the, the messages you'll send them. So we did have another question come through from Laura while we're working on that activity. Um, it's in regards to, so do influencers need to post, she's got hashtag ad when now when they are getting paid for a post? Oh, I'm actually not across that. Um, I haven't heard of that. And if so, that must be something new that they would have rolled out. Um, I think um, I think that they are starting to roll out that you need small disclaimers to just let people know that you are you are doing it as an ad. Okay, great. Yes, that's all the questions that we have. Yeah, sure. Um, and then also in that space of influences, um, what might because an influencer it can be quite a quick win. But then a collaborator is a long term partner. So also have a look in your social media as to who could be your long term partner. And something I do that's worked for me, and I wish I would have implemented this before, is that I, I now tally, or, or what is it? I, I have a database of the people who I collaborate with. So people that are doing complimentary things to me and I see how many people they've brought me and how many people I've given them. And so when I'm finding I'm quite low on people and I, I would like more clients, I reach out to them and I say, hey, you know, how was such and such client? Oh, they're terrific, aren't they? Well, look, I'm, I'm going a little bit quiet and I'm wondering if you've got anyone to recommend me. So then that can keep you a little bit more consistent because I know as a business owner that running a business can be that the, the highs are very high and the lows are very low. And I don't know about you guys, but I found that I was either very, very busy or very, very quiet. And this is a strategy that can kind of balance it out a bit. I mean, I can't promise that it will be completely flatline, but it, it can at least reduce those big spikes. Any more questions, Courtney? That was all the questions. At that the was all the questions. Okay. Yeah. Would you guys be happy to move along? Shall we move along, Courtney? Yeah. Yeah, we'll go to the next section. Okay, great. Um, 
So the next section is to research your competitors. I can give you an example. I don't know if anyone, if we've got a brave volunteer, anyone who would like to share um, their, their business and we can have a look at their competitors because it's best to put it out in, um, into practice. But if, if there's anyone and, and we can go in and have a look at what their competitors are doing, how they're advertising, Would we have a brave volunteer, Courtney? Yes, we do. We have oh. Ava. So um, she works for Explore and Develop, which is a child care. Did you want to come off um, mute me and we can um, have a chat? Sure. Um, I'm responsible for doing the social media for Explore and Develop. I'm happy to look at it. I was just actually looking at it myself just before. Um, I don't know whether I need to share what I'm doing on Facebook now or um, how that would work or whether you just want to look. I was looking up Guardian Childcare just to get an idea. Yeah, I think, okay, Guardian Childcare. I think we'll, uh, we can dive straight in and have a look at your competitors. So mm -hmm. let me, what I like to do is I like to search them Guardian Childcare. And I'll show you guys a really cool trick. I, this is a, their group. That's you, Explore and Develop. Oh, that's a beautiful page. Oh, so you're running an ad at the moment as well, I see. Um, actually, that's I, I work at the support office. So that is our uh, one of our franchisees. So ah, it's a yes. franchise company. So there you go. They're, they're running. Um, I haven't seen that yet. So that's really <laughs> <good to see. laughs> Yeah. Great. Uh, and, yeah, they've got um, it usually when there's an ad in, that's for fun. those that didn't know it says sponsored yeah um guardian child care is this them i gather so yeah I, i'm trying to work out the other competitors oh <laughs> wow so they've actually got quite a big following um 18,000. i think and that's just all of their services i gather they must have one facebook page i'm not sure i'm trying to work that out Right, because sometimes they'd have their franchising pages, right? Yeah, I, I gather so. I'm, mm -hmm. I, I, I often don't have time to check out the competitor. I'm so focused on content myself. Yeah. Oh, I guess one thing um, you can do sometimes, it, it's nice to step back and have a look at what they're doing. And uh, I, I like doing that myself because I then get to get ideas, inspiration from other people. Mm. Um, I think a lot of digital marketers, we find that we're copycats and always copying each other. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, these guys, sometimes they're not really, they're not really boosting a post. They did boost the one about them on the news. Because mm. um, 42 likes nowadays doesn't necessarily happen organically. So mm. they're boosting some posts, not really boosting others. Um, yeah, so they're kind of, yeah, not really doing a great deal. But I'll show you this cool trick. So when you click on page transparency, you can actually see whether they're running any ads. And look at that, they are running ads. So if you click on go to ad library, you can have a look at the types of ads that they're running. So these are the, the ones from the ads manager. They, the ones from the ads manager don't necessarily pop up on your own page, but they, they get distributed to your avatar. And so, wow, they've actually got quite a lot of different ads, different videos. And so, yeah, I like to get my inspiration or ideas from them as well, mm. seeing what they're up to. So they're doing a lot of these video ads, but they're also doing the square ad. So that's really great. Um, would there be another competitor that comes to mind? Um, I'm just trying to think, sorry. I know, I'm sorry to put you on the spot like this. <laughs> yeah, I might have to Google one, I'm just thinking. I know this Guardian, um, who else is there? They're definitely a giant Guardian. Oh, um, G8, they used to be called. I'm not sure if they're called G8 anymore. Oh yeah, G8 Education. Yeah. 
Uh, I think it's, yeah, not the careers one, but the GA education. Yeah, let's have a look. Yeah. I'm guessing this is them. Yeah. I think that's their careers page, but hey, it's still, Oh, that is their careers page. It's yeah, still relevant. It's still very uh, popular. So 5,000 likes. Yeah. Um, and they, I think they are boosting their posts a little bit, like putting, say, $5 on them mm. to kind of keep it sort of relevant. Yeah. Uh, keep the momentum going. Yeah. So they are boosting. Um, let's see if they're running any ads. They're not running any ads um, at the moment. Mm -hmm. So we can only see this in real time as well. We can't see if they ran ads three months ago. Um, and we can't also see how much they've spent. We can just see that they're running ads and have a look at the ads. Yeah. Uh, but as far as that goes, your um, um, your industry is very um, compatible with Facebook. And if they are running ads, and, and these guys are running a whole heap of ads, so uh, I would say that that would be a very sought after brand uh, for Facebook, or, or it's very much, it, it resonates with the Facebook audience. Mm -hmm. And then, oops. And the next question you sort of want to be asking yourself is, um, I guess, the having that budgeting conversation, seeing how much it's worth to, um, how much it's worth for every tour. I think they're doing by tours, oh, they're doing different ads, or they're doing wait lists, but it's pretty much around booking. So be looking at around about how much those bookings cost and whether it makes sense for your um for your childcare to sort of run the um similar ads yeah i'm just wondering whether they run this from head office but they do that for each individual service the book now mm, maybe because they would have several franchises wouldn't they yeah i gather so so mm -hmm. whether that's run through the head office and they do that independently for each one how that works because it's got a location for one of them guardian springfield lakes yeah i have a look thank you that's i've really learned quite a bit yeah I, I i didn't know about this transparency feature but they um they launched it after i don't know if you ever heard of the cambridge analytica scandal mm. after that facebook kind of um made it so that everything would be transparent. And so when you advertise, people can see your ads, you can see people's ads, um, but it, it's just really great for ideas. So, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. so uh, is it Neva? Yeah. Thank you so much for uh, volunteering. All right, and back to the slides. Uh, so that was an example of what researching your competitors looks like. And if you've got other social media platforms, I also know that they have their own transparency uh, feature as well. So feel free to sort of have a look and see what the other advertisers are up to or what the other, what the competitors are up to. But basically when you are researching your competitors, you wanna, um, you want to look for people who are inspiring um, and that's for, for messaging. And you want to be looking for people that are quite similar. That's why uh, that's the, the twins icon. So you want to be looking at people that are fairly like you and maybe the ones that are a little bit not like you, but sort of offering your unique flair. Um, you definitely want to be looking at the aspirational ones like we did today with Neva. Um, because then you can sort of build a roadmap as to what the future would look like. And then lastly, you want to have a look at your competitors to see how they're um, messaging and seeing how that's relating to, to your avatar. So you can get some inspiration by also researching from and seeing what they're up to.
And then last but not least, I'll move us on to brand awareness. I know you've touched a lot on this already, but I'll see if I can give you some additional stuff. When you're thinking about your uh, brand awareness, there's a couple of things. You want to see when your buyer or how ready your buyer is to buy. Because sometimes um, as business owners, we kind of tend to be a bit removed from the situation. And maybe people are just sort of looking around or maybe they're not even aware that you're around at all. So you want to have content that sort of resembles their readiness to buy. Some people might just be ready and then off they go. But I would say that's only 10% of people at the most. Uh, so when you are doing your social media posting, just be mindful that they are in the in the cycle that they're almost ready to buy, but they're not just ready just yet. Most people. The other thing you want to consider is to take a step back and look at your overall goals and KPIs and seeing if this social media initiative actually matches them. And the last thing, again, is you want to see what your competition's up to, just like we touched on before, to generate your roadmap of the future or to see if they've got any inspirational ideas that you can grab from them. And so I'm, I'm not sure whether you've seen this funnel, but there, um, there's sort of three steps. There's top of funnel, middle of funnel, and bottom of funnel. Top of funnel is maybe when people are, are unaware that you exist, but they're looking around and they're open to it. And then they see you and they go, oh, this is, this is great. Then you've got the ones that um, maybe they know you're around and they're in the middle of the funnel. They're considering you and sort of uh, matching you with uh, competitors or sort of quoting around, getting prices. They're, they're sort of doing their research right now. And the ones in the bottom of the funnel are ready to buy. So, yeah, if you think about it like a funnel, that's usually how it works. Um, Courtney, have we got any questions on that? No, no questions as yet. No questions. The other thing I like to say is when you are advertising, you're not really, or, or when you're on social media, it's not really like for like compared to your other um, initiatives. So I've got here three circles and say these circles represent your, um, everyone who would be interested in your product or service. So in this inner circle, and generally, uh, I don't know if there's anyone here about to start a business or if anyone can relate to this, but generally the, the people in the inner circle would be your friends and family. They, they hear about you and then they go, yep, I'm ready to buy. And usually that conversion to sales um, ratio is 80%, meaning that about eight of your friends, if 10 of your friends came in, about eight would be ready to go ahead and, and purchase something or do business with you. Then here you've got the, um, what is it, the, the friends of friends circle. So anyone you meet in networking events or presenting, um, anyone that's been, that's come through as a referral or recommendation, they, they come through the, oh, that, that represents that middle circle. And that middle circle has a close rate it, um, of 30 to 70%, meaning that if 10 people walked in, about three to seven of them would be ready to do business. And, and it just depends on your industry and, and what you're selling them, what you're offering them. But generally um, it would be say 30%, uh, 70%. And then you've got your advertising platform. So you've got Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn. And that is a much broader space. Um, you could literally target everyone. But because um, people know you less, the, the conversion to sales ratio is often 2 to 5%. So when you're advertising online, 
generally speaking, um, you you are not comparing apples to apples. You are targeting a much broader population, but the the rate of a conversion would be about two to five percent. So they're, they're definitely not as ready to buy as your middle circle. Uh, one of my clients said to me, just like the um, legs of a stool, to have social media and digital marketing being one leg, but then also really seeing what you can do to leverage this middle circle, especially because um, sometimes for a lot of business owners, it can act as your bread and butter and it can give you that consistency. Um, so focusing on collaborators while you're sort of building up a website and a social media strategy in the background to have that as another, what is it, another leg for the stool. Uh, so here I've got in this diagram that as you go out of this circle, the level of trust decreases. So here's people that know you really well. And on the very outside, people that don't really know you as well. They don't really, well, so, um, sometimes they could even be an absolute stranger. You wouldn't, they wouldn't even know who you are. So that conversion ratio is also decreasing because of that. And because of that conversion ratio, um, you, you do have to increase the cost. Um, so one example I have is when I've done um, Facebook advertising for my own business, I would tend to get uh, a client for about $120 versus if I'm networking, it would be, say, versus the, I don't know, the $50, the $50 lunch that I would have with them. So it really just, um, the broader you go, you can still get clients, but just have a think about whether it's feasible or not. Because it's also, um, one thing I forget to mention is that the, it, it often also takes more time to land them as a client. Um, so bottom line is you're not really comparing apples to apples, uh, but my recommendation is to have something more sustainable running while you are doing social media, because it can be it can be a great success, uh, but there is a lot of testing and learning to do. Sometimes results may be immediate, which is always what we want, but sometimes they take a little bit of time because you need to test uh, if you've landed the right avatar, if you've got the right messaging, if your budget's okay. So there, there's a lot of back and forth with this. So my recommendations to focus on Focus on it holistically. Focus on, um, you know, building up your relationships while you're doing that. Building up those, uh, I call it bread and butter clients, <laughs> but I don't know if there's another word. While you're then focusing on that um, big overarching social media strategy. And I believe that is all I have. Um, do you guys have any other questions? Thank you so much, Jessica. Um, we are yet to have any questions. So if you do have any sort of final thoughts or comments or questions for Jessica, just pop them in the chat box uh, before we uh, wrap up the session um, and we can uh, get through them. Um, so thank you again, Jessica, for a great session. Um, don't forget, you can also uh, register for the final two sessions that we have in this Digital Solutions Program. Uh, so we have the Digital Marketing Foundations uh, again with Jessica next week, and then we have everything that you need to know about Google My Business uh, to finish off the program. Um, but it seems we haven't had any more questions come through, Jessica. So um, in that case, we might wrap up the session uh, as is. So thank you again. Um, and if you do want to um, see any of our ASVAS advisors, including Jessica, you can uh, through this digital programs uh, program that we're offering. So the first session is free. Uh, so you're welcome to contact the office or reply back at to the thank you email uh, you receive in coming days that will also include uh, the recording from today's session. Um, but thanks again for everyone joining us. Thank you to Jessica and we hope to see you all online next week.